Hey, this is Corey Minton with the Big Data Beard, and I wanted to share with you a quick hot tech opinion. At SplunkConf 2018, Splunk announced a new feature called Smart Store. And during my session, I had some opinions I wanted to share, and I've distilled those down for you here. Enjoy. But I'm gonna assume that you heard the announcement about Splunk Smart Store. Did anybody not hear it? They don't know what this is? Think of it this way, real short. It's just instead of having hot, warm, cold, frozen, you have hot, maybe a little bit of cash, then you have remote, remote path. And today that is an S3 compatible store. So it can be AWS's S3 or it can be on-prem. You know, there's lots of storage providers that make S3 compatible storage devices. This is using S3. It's Splunk's attempt at further decoupling compute from storage effectively to help lower the TCO for many customers. Now, I do want to say this because Splunk is really excited and rightfully so that they've achieved this new architecture and that's good, but I wanna give you some caveats that if you don't actually go in and read the documents which are available on Splunk's website, you may get caught up in the excitement. And the excitement is there's this announcement which is awesome, it's a new architecture, very interesting. It does not do everything that the original architecture would do. There are certain commands in SPL that will not be supported and there's some guidance they give you which is, if you, can, if you can afford, if you're not like freaking out under the pressure, which we're a T minus 10 minutes from freaking out. Um, if you're not freaking out under the pressure of like the storage costs for hot, warm, cold, and frozen, like it's not crushing your existence, ending your life, you probably should stick with it. And it's gonna be around for a long time. If it is crushing you, this is the thing, but you, you should consider this, but also understand there is a significant impact potentially. And that is, if you're looking at searches, if you don't size that hot bucket correctly, you don't give it enough cash, you don't give it enough indexers, anytime you execute a search that's going back into long tail searches, or you run a lot of rare searches that are frequent rare searches, you're basically asking the Splunk cache manager to go get data from an object store. And object stores aren't designed to be high throughput fast machines. You're asking it to send a whole bunch of data to cache and then do the queries, right? There is a better way by doing that using the traditional architecture understand its place in the world. I'm not saying this is wrong because guess what? I work for Dell AMC, we sell stuff to support all of it. What I'm trying to do is avoid you guys coming to me and going, I wanna do this new architecture and our team's selling you stuff and you go, this thing sucks. I don't want that to happen. So we wanna have a very candid conversation about the right place to use this. Because again, it's a, very neat, it's a very neat concept. Okay, I beat that horse down. But this is good documentation. I do appreciate they publish that now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and please do give us a review if you have any other areas of technology you'd like some hot tech opinions.